So, um, I actually did start to lay out the Mishnayot again. Uh, it, 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 I, I really find all, this whole subject really interesting. I keep, when I'm preparing, I keep going off on tangents, and then I remember, but like, what am I going to say in Shiur? So, uh, what we're going to do is, um, the, what we're going to do actually is we're just going, for now, we're mainly going to continue still in the Mishnah. Some of the questions that we brought up before about um, some of the logistics of bringing in the Ketoret and where exactly he put it down and things like that, I do want to go back to them. Some of the, you know, the Gemara here, um, goes into some detail about how, you know, remember at the beginning of the chapter, he's carrying the machta, the, and this machta is, um, uh, he, he's carrying the machta that has coals in his right hand, he's carrying the kaf that has ketoret in his left hand, and we talked about that, that really it should have been the other way around, but he carries the machta with his stronger hand <coughs> and then he has to walk in and, and put it down and then he has to go out and come back in there are a lot of, there's certain logistical issues that the Gemara uh, deals with which I, I do want I think I do want to look at some of the sugyot but I've decided I think this is what I keep coming back to I decided at least let's get through this chapter in the Mishnah so that we have like the bigger picture and then I and I would like to go back over some of the details so let's re, let's just recap at the beginning of the fifth chapter we said and, and this Machta um, is not the Machta it's not the Kol Pan, it was the machta that they used to bring the ktoret to him from Beit Avtinas. And then he takes his handfuls of ktoret, and then he takes natal et machta bimino. This is the machta that has the kol and the kaf in his left hand. Then he goes into the heichal. And he lights the ktoret, and um, here it said, "He Right, so he would go. He he walked in from the uh, from the hechal from the south side. He went up to the north side and walked in, between, you know, walked walking in between the par, the parochot, and then he comes out. And um, then it says he walks until he gets to the Aaron. And he got when he gia la Aaron, otena ta machta ben shnei abadi. So then he takes the machta, puts it between the two rods of the um, Aaron. And then he puts the ktoret on, and then he goes out and says it filak tsara. So now, that of course would all have been done in Bayit Rishon. And here the Mishnah continues, it says, Misha Nital Ha'aron, Evan Haita Sham Mimod Nevi'im Rishonim, Ushtia Haita Nikreit, Gvoa Mina Aret Shalosh Etzbaot, Vialea Ayanotem. Okay, so from the time that the Aaron was taken, right? So the Aaron was not in by Sheni. So of course he couldn't he couldn't uh, put the Ktoret in front of the Aaron. He had to um, he had to make do with what he had. So from the time the Aaron was taken, right, it was hidden by Yoshia Melech in, in toward the end of Bayit Rishon. 
Evan Aita Shamimot Nevi'im Rishonim. So there was a stone there from the days of the early prophets. Ushtia Haita Nikreit. It was called Shtia. Kvoa Mina Art Shalosh Etzbot. It was three fingers high off the ground. He would put the ktoret with he put the machta with it and and then put the ktoret into the machta onto this evan. So the Bartanur explains it's a, it's a very low step. But yes. It's about yes. It's not that big. If my fingers are the shiur of the chazonish, which was probably <laughs> Uh, I measure my 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 tefach is the tefach of the chazonish. It's ten centimeter. My fingers are the fingers of the of the chazonish. But even if you say it was my fingers, which is unlikely, because the etzba that they were using was probably smaller. Even the chazonish might also agree with that because he just he says shiurim actually got bigger. He's not. I don't think he makes the claim that they were that size then. Anyway. So it's not that far off the ground, like it's just a little bit, it's just mm-hmm. protruding a little bit. Ushtiyayita uh, nikreit, so the Bartanur says, al shem shemimena nishtat ha'olam. Miamilat tashtit, tashtit. Right, it's shtiya miamilat tashtit. In other words, it's a foundational stone. Sheba yasad ha'kadosh baruch hu et alamo. With it, Kashbor established or laid the foundation for his world. Shtiya Yusod. Right? Shtiya in this context means foundation. Right? And it's the same root. It's also the root is Shata, Shin Tafhei, but it means um, it's a root meaning to make a foundation. It's like Yasad. Uh, and there are other drashot about what it means. Uh, that like the world is, you know, shotemi uh, Like it, 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 it all. It, it, they put there's some play on the words with shatan, shatan. There is also shti ba'erev. The shti from shti ba'erev is also uh, comes from from the, the, from, the right. Mm-hmm. right. The 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 right the. Uh, I think it's the weft in the in the loom. Shti. There's, there's. It's, it's west. the long. I think it's long way. No, I, I don't remember. Shati, the, yeah, Shati is the is the long one. Yes, and uh, I think that's the uh, word. Transverse, uh, yeah. Right. It's but uh, yeah, yes, you're right. So that's the that that is the same root. Um, one of the things that I thought about is when I was going over this is. It's interesting. This is this is now the second thing that we've talked about that what that had been in the Mishkan and been in Bayit Rishon, and was no longer in Bayit Sheni. Right. So we had the um, uh, uh, the Shemana and Mishcha, and and also the. Um, no, we didn't. Have, we don't have the Aaron. So it's interesting to me about that, uh, and I'm sure that I have not yet. I I just haven't yet come across the sources for it. But here, let's take a look for a moment at. Hold on a second. Let's look for a moment just at the psukim. Uh, right now, we're going to be. Okay, we're following the psukim pretty closely now. Um, we're up to this, uh, uh, right? So this is what this is what we this is what the first mishnah in this in the fifth parak discusses is pasuk um, yudbet from Achremot. Uh, he takes a pan, a cold pan full of uh, of uh, 
burning coals from on top of the Mizbeach before Hashem. And his handfuls, hands full of uh, fine Ktorat uh, Samim. And he brings them into the parocha. So, by the way, here it sounds like he's literally, literally, literally holding the Ktorat in his hand as he's going in. But that's not really how it can be done, because he has to take lo he has to take both handfuls. So that's part of the discussion of the Gemara in the beginning of the chapter, why he did it right the way he did. But as I say, we'll come back to that. Pasuk Yud Gimel Benatanet HaKtorot Al HaEish Lifnei Hashem. So he puts the Ktorot on the fire before Hashem. So then... The Ketoret, the cloud of the Ketoret covers the Kaporet, which is on the Edud, right? So the Kaporet being the panel that's on top of the Aron, uh, and that's on the Edut, right? The Luchot that are inside of the Aron, the Lo Yamut, and he won't die. So meaning if he does the Ketoret properly, he won't die. And if he doesn't, he's Chayab Mitah. Um, then it says, "V'lakach midam hapar." Oh, so what? I, what I want to say before we go on. Um, so the Tanah Tektorat Al Eish Nifnei Hashem Bchisa Anan Tektorat Al Kapor Tashan Al Eidut. So the 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 language here is interesting for a couple of reasons. One of them is. It doesn't mention the Aron, it talks about the Kaporet, which is on top of the Edut, right? But the word Aron is not used. The Kaporet, as we know from Parshat Truma, it's, you know, it, it's its own Kli, uh, which sits on top of the Kli, which is the Aron. But you might, you might wonder how, you know, was there any discussion at the time when they come to do Bayit Sheni, were there any people who said, we can't do this at all because we're missing the kaporet, we don't have the kaporet, so we can't fulfill what it says in this pasuk? Appar so apparently not, you know, it's because they did it, but it wasn't, it, the, even though they were missing the Aaron, which arguably is the raison d'etre of the entire... Mishkan and the entire Beit HaMikdash is for the Aaron. And here we see that it seems to be part, an, in, an integral part of this Avodah, which is certainly, you know, a singular Avodah. It's only done once a year. You might have made the argument that you can't do this without, without the Aron. But that wasn't the argument that was made. You know, apparently, the, what the argu if there was an argument, the argument that went out is, no, we make a Beit HaMikdash regardless. Um, and I, I just, I think it's interesting. I, I, I hadn't really thought about it that much until I was going through this parak. We could have discussed it earlier. Um, but I think it's worth pointing out that uh, that it was not Li Kuva, right? Not having the Aron was not Li Kuva, and it tells you something about the nature of the Avodah, and that ultimately, um, appar apparently, ultimately, it is the place which is the most important thing, right? So the place is there. And, the, and we see now the Mishnah goes out of its way to explain there's this thing, the Evan Shtia, and that has its own significance, even though the Torah doesn't mention it. All right? And it, it said, it, in fact, it wouldn't have been in the Torah, right? Because it says, Mimot Nevi'im uh, Rishonim. Just a second. Shil? Um, yes. Yes. And something strange I'm thinking about. When I think of the Ktoret, I'm thinking about the smell, the good smell which comes out of the Ktoret. 
but here it, it doesn't seem to be the purpose. The purpose is to to to, to create an an anan, and uh, so that you you wouldn't see the inside of the you would be completely inside an uh, how do you say anan? <laughs> The smoke. Yeah. The smoke, the cloud. The, the, the cloud, the smoke, it seems that this is the purpose. Nevertheless, when we read it, it, every day how the, the Torah, uh, how, it, how, how it is composed, you have right. a lot of, uh, of the samim, yeah. of samim which go in, in the, in the Torah. So, uh, so, yeah, and so this is one of the reasons I'm, I mentioned in uh, previous shiur that it seems that so this ktoret even though it's going to presumably it smells the same it's the same ktoret it's just more finely ground and mm -hmm. we learned in the mishnayot in masachat tamid that the ktoret was you know had a profound uh, uh, aroma Oh, yes. Went as far as Yericho, and that the, that the that the young women in uh, Yerushalayim didn't have to you know, because they they everybody smelled good from the Ketoret. So presumably that would have also been true here. Although it's also true that Kodesh Kodeshim was more atum, right? It was more closed. Than the than the hechal, the hechal had uh, windows, windows, yes, the slits that went out, um, and the doors would have been open. And here, it's more it's more contained. But what you're saying is true, and this is why I mentioned in previous times that it seems that the purpose of the Torah here is it may be primarily just to make the anan and like and and we talked about it that it's this is a real uh reenactment a recreation of uh kabbalata torah the anan right which is also mm -hmm. the second luchot where uh moshe comes down on yom kippur right or he goes wait he yeah he comes down on yom kippur so that seems to be the main purpose, is to make, it, like you said, and that seems that the mishtamea mea pasuk, right? It's implied by the pasuk that you make the anan. You have to make the anan. I also, it's also interesting, right? He makes the anan and he walks out immediately. I'm also thinking, presumably, that's also a practical thing because I'm thinking when you put the Torah down in the beginning. It must be almost impossible to stay in there and breathe, right? It's filling up with smoke, and remember, there's also in the Torah there's Ma'ale Ashan, right? There's something in it that makes it, smoke. and uh, and so it must have. Been, I mean, he's going to go back in, but I'm thinking like, in the first few minutes, it must be especially difficult. That I don't know. We don't have any Kohanim Gedolim to ask them. <laughs> But uh, that's what it seems to me. So here in the Mishnah Bet, when it talks about Mishnah Ital Ha'aron and all of that, the Mishnah, I think, is trying to do two things. One is it's telling us that, yes, everything we said in the first Mishnah is true as long as you have an Aron, but they didn't have an Aron in the second temple. So, so But they did have Evin Shtia. They, they did have Evin Shtia. And so that, for the purpose of this avodah, is going to take the place of the Aron. So, what? So now, the Evan Aitasham Mimot Neviim Rishonim. It's from the time of the Neviim Rishonim. Um, so, if it was there from the time of the Neviim Rishonim, what does it mean? When the Vartanur says, Al Shem Shemi Men and Mishtata Olam. In other words, it would seem to have been there from Maseb Breshit. Right? And as Hashem uses it, he makes he 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 makes the world from it. I think the it's called Tiburo Sha Olam. It's like the navel of the universe. Uh, 
so that's that's um, a bit of a question. Um, and this is, you know what, I'm not going to go into the, I, this is one of the things I want to come back on. I, I do want to talk about this more, this phenomenon of the Evan Shtia. But just even with what we have now, there seems to be a correspondence now between the Aron and the Evan Shtia. Right, so that by putting the the Evan Shtia takes the place of the Aron for the purpose of this Avodah. So why would the Evan Shtia be a, a worthy um, counterpart to the Aron? Right. In other words, what we don't have the Aron, so we have, but we have the Evan Shtia. The Evan Shtia doesn't have the Luchot. So why why should it be worthy of of you know being uh, of, as it were taking the place of the Aron? Well, could it be that the Evan Shtia was also in the first temple and the Aron was put on, on top of it? It would seem so. Right? In other words, that seems to be true. In other words, even just based again, just based on what we see. Even I touch on Mimot Nevi'im Rishonim. Nevi'im Rishonim is the first temple. Yeah. That would be the yeah you know, would be the first temple. And you know Nevi'im Rishonim would include the Nevi'im who were in the time of Shema Amalek, presumably, when he builds the temple. Uh, the, the time of Shlomo, yes, when you build the temple. That was Shmuel was there. <laughs> so the, I I guess what I'm getting at though is I think I think. Um, there's a, there's a kind of a conceptual relationship that Evin Shtia is this Evin that Hashem uses to make the foundation of the universe. And that's also true of Torah, right? Hashem looks in the Torah and he creates the universe. So that those two things have a direct relationship and that's presumably why the Aaron does sit in the place, you know, it sat on the place of the Evin Shtia. And so even if the Aaron isn't there, but the Evin Shtia, which is, you know, which, which represents also the founding of the universe, is an appropriate place to put the Torah. That, I think, I think that those two things, uh, should be related because otherwise, zekotov yafed that there's this evin shtia there, but why should that be raui, right? Why should that be worthy of uh, or appropriate for putting the ketoret there? But I think that it's it's more than that. It's the nature of the evin shtia uh, shares something with the nature of the aron itself. So even though they did not have the Aron, they don't cancel, they don't, they don't not make a Beit HaMikdash, they do not cancel the Avodah of Yom HaKippurim just because they don't have an Aron. Presumably this is a sufficient, if not substitute, but it's a, it's a sufficient um, thing <laughs> to have in order to be able to accomplish this Avodah. So it is the place, but it's also the thing. It seems that it's it's essential that if if not the Aron, but at least the Evin Shtia should be there. But this is also the way we, we look at the uh, Kotel Amaravi. Uh, the, 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 the temple is no more there, but we have still we have we do have the the Kotel. So in we, the we pray in, in, in front of the Kotel. So there, in that case, it could be the same, that uh, the Aron is, uh, well, it, it uh, wasn't there anymore. It, uh, it's an ignat. With, with, with Pover, kind of, kind of, as far as but I remember. The, 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 Aron, the Aron was, was uh, hidden away by Yoshi. Yes, because it, it was and made it, of, uh, of uh, wood. And just, uh, it, was, it was made with, uh, yeah, oh, so, no, 
Yeah, it, it, the thing is, it could still ex exist today, right? Because it, ma it was made of wood and covered with gold. Uh, mm. so, you know, there there are, you know, there, it could still exist. And the, t and the Ruchot were stones, so presumably they still exist. Mm. But, um, yeah, uh, right, it wasn't found until Indiana Jones, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the other thing I want you to think about, actually, I gave a little talk about this on Shabbat at the shul I was at. Um, so here we are, we're recreating Mamat Har Sinai, and inside, I mean, in, in, in the ideal format, in, in most, throughout most of Bayit Rishon, there were the Luchot, and the Luchot are really, as we mentioned many times, those are, it's really the central point of the of the whole enterprise. In other words, in in the Mishkan, that was the central point of the of Machane Israel. And in the time of Beit Mikdash, it's the central even it, it, it the geography is not exactly the same, but it's still it's a central point. This is where the Shrina is Shora. Now also, I want you to consider that the Luchot, the, the, so what's on Luchot are the, the Aserta Dibrot, and the Aserta Dibrot are carved out, and they're carved out completely, right? The, the, each letter is carved all the way through. So um, there's, a, there's this interesting kind of ephemeral um, effect, or this ephemeral phenomenon that's taking place that you have a cloud which is something that we associate with the Shrina, we associate with God's presence, uh, and not only on Har Sinai, but also later on in the Midbar, Hashem speaks to uh, Moshe from uh, uh, a cloud, like he talks to him from the cloud. And the cloud is something, even though, yes, we know that it has a phys there's a physical substance to it, but it's, it's not something you can hold in your hand. And, what, and, and, the, and, the, and the focal point are the words, and the words on the, of the luchot is also, are also not something, that, that they're, they're also not there, right? The, it's the thing that's not there. And I think these things uh, point to You know, the, like Sod Hashem. There's some. There's this. This. These are like the mysteries of God. They're things that you perceive in a certain way, but they're not there in a physical sense for you to hold on to them. And yet they are. They are the most important thing. Right. So the word. The letters never were never there because the letters are carved exactly. out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the point. There's the letter which are the most important thing, are the thing that isn't there, right? It's only through our perception that we, we can perceive that they're there because of the stone, the stone what, you know, that's around it. If not for the stone, uh, if not for the stone, then you could say like, okay, for Hashem the letters exist, but only Hashem would be able to perceive the letters. We only perceive them because God put the, you know, made, you know, made the letters, uh, you know, or cut out the letters from the stone. So and there was this mess more. that uh, the, the, the middle of the summer <laughs> was, this, Some, it was there. <laughs> so it, yes, it, it was, right. The, the, the Gemara says, the Gemara <laughs> says, Mem v'samech shebeluchot v'nei sayu amdim. The Mem stuna and the Samech. And according to, the Yerushalmi says, according to the Mandamar that says, uh, that the Torah was given in Ketab Ivri, then uh, the Ayin stood benes. The Ayin was a closed loop in uh, Ketab Ivri. The, the, the Ayin, I don't know Ketab Ivri very well, but if you look at uh, the, uh, if you look at Ketab Ivri, mm -hmm. the Ayin in the Ketab Ivri is very similar to the Ayin that we do in script. Mm -hmm. Almost the same letter. And uh, so, yeah, so yes, so, odioter, right? In other words, Hashem makes sure that we can perceive the letters, ad that he has to make certain letters 
stand by way of a miracle. But the letters aren't there, right? The letters are not actually there. I just think there's something deeply profound about that. Um, let's go on and uh, do a little more. The letters you write, they are there. <laughs> they are there, right? But remember, like, you know, when it talks about the Asara Haru Gemalchut and Rabbi Hanina, he's, they wrap him in the Sefer Torah and they saw Otiot Porchot Ba'avir as, as, he, as he's burning. And that's also, it's a very, it's a very mystical, but it's a very striking image. What does that mean, Otiot Porchot Ba'avir? So the simple understanding of Otiot Porchot Ba'avir is, it's a similar idea. In other words, the sofer that takes ink and puts it on cloth. If there's no cloth, then the letters are Porchot Ba'avir. So it's not... It's not that when then when the Sefer Torah is being burnt, that the letters actually the, the the image is is not what you might think, which is that the letters burn with the kaf, right? The ink would burn with the kaf, but it's saying something else. That the image is that if you don't have kaf, then there's no place for the letters, and just like in the Luchot, we need the stone in order to see the letters, we need the Kaf to be able to see the letters. And otherwise, the letters still exist because the Torah precedes the universe. But we can't, we can't access it anymore. Right? So if the, uh, Moshe breaks the first set of Luchot, the stone is still there, but you can't see the letters anymore. Right? So, anyway, yeah, it's something you can imagine I do think about a lot, about the, about what's going on with letters. Um, let's go on to the next Mishnah. So now, uh, just to remind us, before we look at the Mishnah, let's look again at the, at the Pasuk. And, yeah, okay. So what's the next pasuk? Um, uh, so the next pasuk, right? So he uh, pasuk yud gimel he put the ktorot on the fire, etc. Pasuk yudar v'akach midam hapar v'hizabe etzbao penei hakaporet kedma. So he takes from the blood of the bullock. And he sprinkles with his finger on on the front of, or it could be on the front of, or in front of the kaporet eastward. kaporet, and in front of the kaporet, yazeh sheva pamim min hadam And he will sprinkle seven times from the blood with his finger. So. We learned about in the Mishnah, right, that um, he shechted the par in the previous chapter, and what was and what happened to the blood of the par? What 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 was going on with the blood of the par until now? Someone was holding it and stirring it to keep it from congealing. Right. So somebody is on the rovad harubini, wherever that is exactly, but in front of the ulam. And uh, they're stirring it because he had to do all of this, which, you know, took some time. Now he's going to come back and get the blood. So the Torah doesn't say exactly how he gets the blood, but this is what they did to make sure that he could still get the blood. They had somebody stirring it, but he couldn't bring it in all at once. Because he, his hands are already full when he goes in. So even though the Torah itself doesn't, uh, the Torah itself doesn't say <coughs> after he did the Torah that he has to go out and bring the dam of the par in. But presumably that's the only possible way of doing it. He has to go out because he couldn't have brought everything in all at once. They didn't let him take it in like in a little cart or something. He had to actually hold everything coming in. 
So now this is what our Mishnah says. Natalata dami misha hayam He takes the blood from the person who had been stirring it. <coughs> so he doesn't have to go very far, but he has to go out of the Kodesh through the Hechal, through the Ulam, and then he has takes the blood and he goes back in. Um... He goes into the place that he had uh, gone into. He stands in the place that he stood. He sprinkles from it once toward, toward above and seven times toward down. But he wasn't, his intention wasn't to go high, you know, to, to, to go up and then to go down. Rather like a matzlif. And the matzlif, we'll see the, how the Bartuna explains it. It's like a person who's whipping, like a person who whips. And this is how he would count. And we all know this, if not from the Mishnah, but from, right, uh, from Musaf of Yom Kippur. Achat. Right? Achat 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 Yatsa Kan Hazahav so then he went out and he placed it on the the uh, the amud the <laughs> the stand that was made of gold that was in the hechal. Okay, so so we under so we know from the pasuk that he has to go in with the blood of the par and to do this sprinkling. How do, how do we know that he had to do one and then seven? What's the pasuk again? Oh, wait, hold on a second. Okay, I have the pasuk here. Let's see. There's something I don't understand. In the pasuk, you read uh, that he was uh, doing the Hazaya Kedma. Kedma. Since the di direction of the um, Kodesh HaKodeshim was from east to west, so if he does the Azaya Kedma, he has to stand not in front, but behind behind the Eben Ashtia. No, he could be standing in front. In other words, uh, but, but, no, but he could. well, think, think about it. You're right. Think about it when the Aaron was there. So the Aaron is taking up this space, and he stands in front of the Aaron, which means his back would be toward the west, and his no, to the east. Be toward the east. To the east. Why? Something. Because the the Kodesh Kodeshim was not was in the direction from from uh, from east to west. Yes, but the so, but the Aaron, uh, the Aaron, the Aaron would be the Aaron itself also went east to west, but unless I I'm think so, no. and he would be standing, he would be standing between the Aaron and the back of the Kodesh Kodeshim. Yes, yes. So he has to be behind the Aaron, not on He's the got, side of the parochet, but. On the side of the throne. Right, so so this... Of, the, of the western no, wall. <laughs> the western, mm -hmm. Right, the west is behind him. Mm -hmm. His face is facing the east. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll see in a moment, right? So he does this, he has to do it with the, with the Dhamma Seir, and then he's going to take both Damim and do it from the Hechal, where his back will be toward the east and his face will be toward the west. Because he's mm. both sides of the parochet. Mm. Both sides of the parochet. Um, we'll get to that in a moment, but wait, there was something else. 
Right, so this is the Pasuk. Lakach midam hapar, biza be'etzba'o p'nei ha'kaporet kedma. So Chazal understood that's the first hazaya, that's the first sprinkling, what it says in the beginning of the Pasuk. Biza be'etzba'o p'nei ha'kaporet kedma. And then it says, v'lifnei ha'kaporet yazeh sheva p'amim, they understood those were two different actions. They were two different sets of actions, pull out. So the, the beginning of the Pasuk is to do one, and then to do and then the second part of the Pasuk is to do seven. And then it's got, it's got to go around between the first and, and, the, and, the, and the other why, seven. Why do you, between the one and the seven, why do you say that? Because the lifnea kaporet yazeh, when you kedma does one, and afterwards he goes lifnea kaporet. So I mean, I, I understand between the kaporet and the uh, and the parochet. So he's standing on the other side. You know what? I hadn't thought of it that way, but that apparently that's. I don't know. I, I just. <laughs> No, no, no. Apparently to that, what's <laughs> right, exactly. That's what we're trying to do. So apparently that's not what happened. So let's look a little more closely now at the Mishnah and uh, and the Bartunura. Natalot Adami Mishayama Moreispo, Nichnasa Makom Shinichnas, Yamot Ben Makom Shaman, Izami Mena Achat Lama Vesheva Lamata. So let's look at the Bartunura. The Makom Shinichnas, Rakshnia, Bevet Kodesh Kodeshim, right? He goes to the place where he goes, which is in the Kodesh HaKodeshim, and he stands by Makom Shemad Ben Hamadim. So he's standing between the two staves, the two rods of the of Aron. Ah, the, uh, but, uh, but, uh, Badim, the, yes, okay. The, those are the Badim of the Aron. Mm -hmm. So he's placed squarely in front of the Aron. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what does the Bartunu explain what it means? He says, He's not aiming for the top uh, edge of the Kaporet. He's not aiming for the top edge of the and then the seven, and then you would say that the seven, seven the seven would be lower down in the width, you know, on the width of the uh, of the Aron. Share lo ahakaporet nogim. The blood isn't actually supposed to fall onto the kaporet at all. Ela la aretz nothing. It's supposed to. He's supposed to sprinkle in such a way that it's going to fall on the ground in front of the arod. So rather, ela lo yamit kaven la azod lo lo mal lo lo mata ela kematzlif. What does he mean? Kamal ke hazeh, like the one who is uh, whipping. Shematchil bein haktefaim. Yored Lamata. This is a little bit chilling, right? But it's like starts whipping between the shoulder blades of the person he's whipping. And then he proceeds downward, down the back. Kashura. Zu Tachatsu. He's supposed to he's supposed to sprinkle them in a row where the top one I, I'm, the way I envision it, the top one is going to end up being the closest to the Aram, but it won't, it'll be like, it'll fall right in front of the Aram. And then each subsequent one is going to go back a little bit. So, and he doesn't say this being furash, but based on the, on the analogy, it will look like Amuda Shidra, right? It'll be like vertebrae coming down in front of the Aron. And he's like, so I don't know how, I'm not sure how far this metaphor goes of Matzlif, but that's the image that, that you get. Uh, and so when he counts, he doesn't count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He counts one, 
and then achat v'achat. So why does he do that? Achat v'achat she'im lo she'im lo yimne hazaari shona shelamala laatzma. If he if he wouldn't count the first sprinkling, that's the top, by itself in kol sheva shelamata. Uh, with the with the other seven that are below it, pa'amim, sheet eh. Sometimes he'll make a mistake. Yimne hazaari shona im sheva shelamate. Then he would end up counting the first one with the subsequent seven. Uba hazaari rishona shelamate yimne shtaim. The ein lomar and and so so he might instead in other words instead of saying achat. And then achat shtaim shalosh arba bechule, he might say achat, and then shtaim shalosh arba chamesh sheva shmona. So what's so terrible about that? The ein lomar yimne hazaah shalamal im sheva shalamata yimne at shmona, and you can't say that that's what he should do. Diyesh lomar mitzvah lahavsik matanot shalamata mitoch shiva, v'lo mitoch shmona. In other words, based on the way that the pasuk relates this particular avodah, it se- it seems like you have to make a clear separation between the first haza'a and the subsequent seven. So you don't count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You count one, and then in theory, what you could do is then count again one, like achat. And then achat shtaim shalosh arba chamesh sheva, but we're afraid that if he repeats achat in that regard, he might get confused, or he might just go achat shtaim shalosh arba chamesh sheva. So this way he does achat, and then achat veachat, meaning he's always going to reference back uh, to the first one, and that's how he makes sure that the count. Remains both accurate but also separate from the first achat, from the first first, from the first one. Um, let's go a little further. Now, heviu lo atasair. Okay, so what was it in the pasuk now? In pasuk tedvav, <coughs> after he does this. <coughs> it says, <coughs> Again, the Pasuk doesn't tell us that then he left the Kodesh Kodeshim and the, and the Kodesh and went outside. That, that's apparent, right? That's implied because he has to now go out and shecht the Seir. So he... he um, he was Mia'ed, right? He designated the Seir earlier. And now that Seir, is, the Seir Chatat is being held until he comes out. Now now he's going to Shechte. The Shechat et Seir Chatat Asher La'am Ve'evi et Amo El Mi Bet Laparochet. And here, he can take it immediately. He doesn't have another Avodah to do in between the Shechita and the Haza'ah, like he did with the Par. Uh, he's going to take the blood of the seir and do the same thing with it that he did with the blood of the par. So the al is is uh, parallel to what it said about the blood of the par al and then the Vilifne uh Al Kapar Vilifne Kapar is parallel to what it says about the second uh Hazaot where it says Vilifne Akapar. Uh so in the Mishnah it's described as the as follows. Vilo etasir. So then he would have gone out. Again, presumably he's gonna stand where he stood when he shechted the par. Which was between the Mizbeach and the Ulam. Shchatov kibel ba Mizraket Damo. He would shecht it, <coughs> and then he would get its blood with the cleave for capturing blood. And here also the Mishnah is is 
condensing what happened, right? Because presumably he shechts the same way he did as the par, which is that he did rov shnayim. He did most. He did enough shchita to be yotze the shchita, but then gave it to somebody else to finish so that he could capture the blood. So he captures the blood. Nichnas in kom shenichnas v'yamad bim in kom shamad, just like he did. Uh, now for the Ketoret and for the Dam Hapar. Now he's going to do the stand in the same place as for the Dam Hasi'ir. In the same way that he did for the Par. So the, the blood of the par, he put on a stand, on a golden stand that was in the Hechal, and now Yatzav Hinicha al Kan Hasheni Shahayabi Hechal. There was a second golden stand, and he would put the blood of the Seir on the second golden stand. Rabbi Yehud Omer, Lo Hayasham Ela Kan Echad Bilvan. Rabbi Yehud said, actually, there was only one Kan. And that's the same kind that he put the blood of the par on. Natal dam ha-par, v'hiniach dam ha He takes the blood of the par that had been there from before, and he puts down the dam ha-seir. V'zamimenu al ha-parochet shekeneged ha-aron mibachutz. So now he's going to sprinkle onto the parochet or toward the parochet in correspondence to where the aron is, but now but from the outside. Achat Lamala Vesheva Lamata. Sorry, so he left he's now left the Kodesh Kodashim. Yes, right, because here it says Yatsa Bihinicha Al Kanashini. Let's go back in a minute for, uh, for a moment to the Pasuk. Right, so Pasuk Tetvav was the Hazah of the, of the blood of the seer inside. And Pasuk Tetzain says, V'chiper aha kodesh mitumot b'nei Israel, that the purpose of that sprinkling was to be, uh, to bring kapara for tumot b'nei Israel, aha kodesh mitumot, to, to be mechaper aha kodesh mitumot b'nei Israel. Rashi explains, what was that? What is that? Ahanich. It's to be machaper. Ahanich nasim no mikdash betuma v'lo no dalahem basof. It's people who walked into the mikdash when they were tamei, and they never found out, even later on, that they had been tamei. Shenema the chochatotam v'chatat who shogeg. So it, and. Um, yeah, if you've ever learned the beginning of uh, Masechet Shavuot, that's where this is discussed, about what um, different types of shogeg and different kaparot for different kinds of shogeg. The particular chet that's being, that, uh, that's being um, atoned for here is this chet of people who were b'shogeg. Actually, it, it also covers the mizidim, who go because it's a, <laughs> because the Amshech of the Pasuka says um it says uh Vukhipal Kodesh Mitimod Bana Isa Umi Pishehem the Khochatotam. So Khatotam Khatatu Shogeg Umi Pishehem Af Rashi says Afa Nichnasima Mikdash Mezid Bituma. This is to be Mukhaper for anyone whether they were shogeng and didn't know, they never were, they didn't find out ever that they had been Tameh when they walked into the Mikdash, even if maybe they had known before, but then they didn't know later, and but also even Mizidim. So that's what this is accomplishing. Then it says, Pasuk Yudzayin, V'chol Adam lo hiyeh ba'ohel mo'ed, so now, no one else is allowed to be in the Oum Away. In other words, in the Kodesh, in the Hechal. Because now he's in the Hechal, and now he's going to do this Avodah to be Mechaper al HaKodesh. 
and no one else is allowed to be in there at the time. Right? Because now he's going to sprinkle the blood from the par, which is for him and for the kohanim, and for the you know, and the blood of the seir, which is to to be mechaper for shar ha'am for for bnei yisrael. Um, so here. Let's just uh, understand. Um, that's a hemshech pasuk tetzayin is the hemshech of pasuk tedvav, where it's talking about the hazaot that were inside. <coughs> but then the second part of pasuk tetzayin says v'chein yaaser la'ohel So the that which he did in the code in the Kodesh Kodeshim. One second, I did not mean to do that. That's what that which he did in the Kodesh Kodeshim. This he will also do this in the Ohel Mo Eight. And that's and that's what we just read. And then no one else can be there when he does it. When he comes in to be mechaper bakodesh, and how is he going to be mechaper bakodesh? By sprinkling the blood toward the parochet, but front now from the side of the hechal, facing west. So that's what the Mishnah here is is describing. So what did he do? Natal dama parvi niach dama seir v'yizami menu al aparochet shekeneged haarov mi bachutz achat lamal v'shevet lamata, and the same thing. Lo hayamit kaven lazod lo lamal v'lo lamata el kamatzif. In other words, he does the pula, the action of sprinkling, is exactly what he did inside the kodesh kodeshim. And then he would count the same way, right? Because the pasuk says Kenya ase, but the Ohamoid. He's going to do the same thing in the Ohamoid as he did in the Kodesh Kodeshim. Kacha yamone achat veachat achat achat veachat achat u'shtayim achat v'shalosh achat v'arba achat v'chamesh achat v'shesh achat v'sheva. Then natal dam ha'seir v'hiniach dam apar. Now he's going to take the blood of the seir and put down the dam of the par that he was holding. Now he'll take the blood of the seir, and he's going to sprinkle it toward the parochet in correspondence to where the aron is on the other side, but he's doing it from the outside. Then what does he do? Eira dam hapa the toch dam maseir, benatan et amalei bereikan. He pours the blood of the par into the blood of the seir, and he has two kelim. He's going to take the kli that had the blood of the par, which he which he did first, and he's now holding the kli that has the blood of the. Seir, he'll pour the blood of the par into the kli that has the blood of Seir. Benatan et berekan. He will place the full one into the empty one. So, what does all that mean? Bartunura says, Natal dama par viniach dama Seir. Maskana de mil to the Rabbi Yehudahi. This line in the Mishnah. Is, is the Hemshech of Rabbi Yehuda. Because Rabbi Yehuda said there weren't two stands, there weren't two golden stands in the Echal. There was only one. <coughs> and the, the stand presumably only had room for one of the Kalim. So what he would do, according to Rabbi Yehuda, is he would take the blood 
the cleed, that is, with the blood of the par, he would pick that up, and he would put down the cleed that he had just brought in from the shchita of the dama seir. That's the conclusion of the of the word of Rabbi Yehuda. Dama lo hayasham elakan echad. There was only one stand. But Zarichi told Dama par tchila, and you have to take the Dama the par first. Kedei la niach Dama seir bakan shahaya alav Dama par. Vein halachak Rabbi Yehuda. The halacha is not like Rabbi Yehuda. So then he sprinkles the blood al haparochet. Like we saw in the Pasuk. And then when he's finished, Erad Dam Hapar into the Dam of the Seir. Dichtiv b'matnot ha-mizbeach v'lakach midam hapar u'midam ha-seir midam shnehem yachad. Right? So that's the Hem Sheikh here in the next Pasuk. When he goes out to the Mizbeach, uh, what does it mean? It's the Mizbeach, it's the Mizbeach of the Ktoret inside. Uh, he's going to be Mchaper on that as well. Here he's going to take both bloods at the same time. He's going to put it on the uh, the horns of the mizbeach around. And that's what the Mishnah here is describing. That he takes the dama seir. I'm sorry. He poured the dam of the par into the dam of the seir, and then we'll see in the next Mishnah that, that he's going to take that to do the kapara on the Mizbeach. But just to finish here in the Bartanur, Eirat dam apar diktipa matnot Mizbeach, because it says in the next Pasuk about the matanot that we we'll put on the Mizbeach, kach midam apar, midam seir, meaning midam shnehem yachad. That's how Chazal understood it when the Torah says that you took, you took from the blood of the par and of the blood of the seir. Now he's going to take them both together. What does it mean that he, he takes the full one and puts it in the empty one? It means he takes now the mix the the blood that has now been poured together because he poured the dam of the par into the dam of seir now he'll take it and pour it into the first kli and that's going to mix it up so i think let's stop here next time we're going to continue with uh, the matanot of the mizbeach and Believe I think what we'll do is we will do, we will press on just to get the pshat of the Mishnayot, and and then at that point either I'll decide we should continue or I, we may go back and just revisit some of the little details about the uh, things that you brought up. But I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay. okay, so uh, God willing, I'll see you next week. If it turns out that I have to move next week, I may still be able to give shiur, but I, you know, I'll let you know in case I may have to cancel. Because each day, okay. each day is a surprise for me now. <laughs> okay, that's right. all right. Thank, Thank you. you. It's not good night, but good afternoon. <laughs> good night to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.